So I had a thought some time ago, after seeing a video about a machine which removed the threads going along this direction using a knife, I thought, I can't really justify buying a really expensive machine just to do drawn thread embroidery. But then I had a thought, what if I used the cutwork needles that are available? Now this is an Inspira brand, but I think they exist for most embroidery machines where you can do cut work on your embroidery machine. So for horizontal facing bobbins, front facing bobbins, you use the yellow needle. But if you have a machine which is a side facing bobbin, you can use the, I think it's, let me see, it's one of the other colors, you just have to open it up and look. You just have to make sure it's 90 degrees to the flat. So that one looks like it's blue. So it looks like the blue one is 90 degrees to the flat. But I had to figure out what to do to make it work. So I tried straight stitch. So it does work on a straight stitch machine, but of course you only get the width of these tiny, um, tiny blades. I mean, you can see they are very tiny. However, if you do loads side by side, it works very well. Um, you just do, you know, a whole bunch side by side by side. Complicated, but it works. However, I found out, or figured out, that there's another option. So on this Kenmore, there's a, a four-point multi-point zigzag. And what I've done is I've set the width to three, because what that means is the knife blade cut crosses over, just touches the edge of each stitch width, so that means it catches all of the, the threads, whereas if it goes to four, what it would do is it would miss out some threads, so that wouldn't be a very good effect. So I'll show you what I mean. One thing I found is, because you're cutting the fabric, you need to make sure it's anchored really tightly, so I just use maximum uh, foot pressure, and then the stitch length is set to probably something around 20 stitches per inch. The idea is, because it's a multi-point zigzag, you don't want it too, too triangular. You want it almost straight up and down. So the smaller the stitch length, within reason, the better. If it's too small, it will stop cutting your, hor your vertical, the threads going this way, and you don't want that because you end up with a big hole. So it's a bit of a balancing act. So, off we go. I'm going to zoom in a bit, and then I'll show you the results. Okay. Now, it's going to be slightly hard to see on here, but I will show you the effect after and what happens. So, off we go. So it's very quiet. It doesn't seem like anything's happening, but that's part of the fun. Because there's no sewing going on, so you don't hear the noise of the bobbin. You just hear the noise of the motor. You can really go quite quickly. So I'm on a wobbly table as usual, so you can't go too quick. If I hold it down, I can go pretty fast. Okay, that's good enough. So, let me show you what results we've got here. So from the front now, let's see if you can see how it's sort of shredded. Okay, so you see that sort of the fabric seems to be damaged. On the reverse side, we see it's kind of fluff. But if you pull that out, those are the horizontal, those are the threads going along the length of what you've sewn. Okay, so if I pull some of those out, Okay, so this is cut the threads along the direction that I was working, and it's just pushed them down. So you get some fluff. I've taken out the um, hook just to make sure the hook couldn't possibly hit the, knee, the, the, the blade. I don't think it would because it's designed to work with machines. However, it will also throw a, lot of, a little bit of fluff down there, so it's easier if I don't have it. So what happens now, let's see if we can zoom in a bit, is you can see, if I pull this apart, the 
the horizontal threads or the threads along the direction I was going have been cut out. What that means now is you can do all sorts of fancier Oop, there we go, sorry. What this means is you can do much better or easier hem stitching or other fancy stitches to, along your drawn thread. So you can gather those up. So you can see here, let me zoom back out. I'll fold this over. So the extra stitching. What you can see there is, if I put my thumb behind it, you can see how I've thinned the fabric out. So that will now allow you to do other work, like hem stitching easier, more easily. <coughs> Excuse me. But it also means that you can do this hem stitching on synthetics. Though this is linen, it will actually allow you to do it on synthetic fabrics, which you couldn't do before. So that's a bit of fun. So the next test I'm going to run is I've put the straight stitch plate on here, so we're going to pretend that we're trying the same idea on a straight stitch machine. So we've got a smaller hole, and this is more complicated because we're moving the fabric side to side. So I have no idea if I've got the settings right yet on this, but we're going to try. So I've reduced the foot pressure. Um, so it's not at the maximum because that wouldn't be very nice with the attachment. Um, it's working, that's good, but it's not very wide. So I'm going to increase the width on this multi-point zigzag just a bit and see if that works a bit better. Because it's a seven-point multi-point zigzag on this. So yes, it's definitely doing what it's supposed to. That's surprising. I didn't think this would work. And let's go up to the maximum and see what happens. Okay. So this actually is wider than I can get on the Kenmore itself, which is quite good may not be as fast, well I could probably go faster, but you know I don't want to chance breaking any any of my this blade because they're very expensive. Now the one thing that's actually immediately better about this approach than the standard approach is it doesn't shove the fluff down as much into the bottom of the machine. So that's quite a good thing. So let's see what results we get. So it's a bit tight, I would say, because it's cut some of the threads, but it's working. Oop, so you can see there, it, it's a bit too vicious. Oop, let's see if we can get this in the camera. It's a bit too vicious there. Um, so if I increase the stitch length, it might be slightly less vicious. So let's get it closer to 12 and see if, how that works. That's a bit not quite enough. <laughs> it's too much. So as you see, I have to play a bit to find the happy medium. So hmm, it's hard to say what that is. 15 or so, somewhere in there. Let's see how that looks. See how that looks. Okay, and that looks not too bad. Let's pull up the fluff and see what we've got. Shall we pull up the fluff? Oh yes, that seems to be working very well. Okay. Yep, that worked. So what you can see is I have a very wide bit with the threads removed. So, in some cases, for loosely woven fabric, you could do pull the threads out without any problem. However, for this type of fa fabric, or other types where it's very difficult to do, um, that works very well. So I'm pleased with that. I did not know that, I did not think it would work. But it's worked. So neat. Cool.
Okay. So now I could use my uh, fancy stitches to um, do, to do the um, hem stitching and whatnot, and it would work very well. So there's the test for today. That was fun. Bye for now.